Hi, everybody. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Home Wrecker Podcast. I am the Golden Greek, Alex Arion, joined as always by my beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing trophy wife, the lovely Monique. Monique. Hi. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Doing fantastic as Yay. always. And for anybody watching right now, yes. we are actually uh, in our living room. Yes, we have a little bit of a different yeah. setup today, and there's good reason why. Yeah, we just finished watching the movie that we're going to be reviewing and talking about today. They tonight. live. They live. And we did a watch along for a bonus. I was hoping you were going to leave that to the end. Oh. But that's okay. Whoops. Cat's out of the bag. Yep. Way to blow the spot. I apologize. Nice going. Anyway, yes. So. Yeah, we just finished watching uh, They Live, and we're going to talk about that movie Yes, right now, aren't we? Yeah, so this movie was... I think, actually, before we do that, why don't we get all the, the, the plugs, anything like that, out of yeah. the way so that we can just get into the movie and then just... That sounds good. All right, so social media-wise, how can people find you, my lady? Find me on social media at underscore Monique Giselle underscore, and that's with one L. And uh, that's to follow me on Twitter. I also just made a Twitter account for my hypnotherapy account. So it's at Monique P-C-H-T. So find me on there and add me. And uh, then you can go to my website, tarotbymonique.com and find me on Etsy, Wonders by Monique. And check out my new website, innerstandingshypnosis.com. There you go. Yeah, I got that set up. Woo. Excellent. Yes. All right. And then you can find me. I'm on Twitter at the Alex Arion, Alex Arion I don't go on Twitter much anymore at all. But if you want to follow me there in case I ever decide to go back on and start posting again. But don't yeah. hold your breath. And as far as the podcast goes, we are on social media. We have a Twitter account, which is at Homewrecker Pod. And our website, homewreckerpodcast.com. There you have it. Yeah. So, so anything else you want to plug or um, get in before we get into the movie? Yes. I am doing a group hypnosis session for Inner Child on Wednesday, August, I believe it's the 25th at six o'clock Eastern time. So if you want to get in on that, there's still a few spots available. I don't know by the time this airs if there will be. Um, cause I'm trying to keep it small, but yeah, just go. I've been putting links out. We'll include it in the show notes, sign up and you can join the group hypnosis session. There you Meet your it. inner child, get there to know them. It. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So they live. Let's yes. get into it. 1988 John Carpenter movie starring Rowdy Roddy Piper. The rowdy ones. Yes. Yes. And uh, for anybody watching, <sighs> all my notes are here on my phone. <laughs> so I'm going to be looking at this quite a bit. That's OK. Do you want to kind of talk about our childhood memories of this movie first? Yeah, why not? OK, it's, it's, it's the wonderful thing about about this show. We don't plan anything. We just kind we of just do it. We, we just got to go. Yeah. I, I I remember the first time I saw this movie, I think it was in like the early 90s because i didn't see it when it first came out i didn't see it in the theater or anything like that uh it, because i think it, it's rated r right yeah it's not yeah. yeah so i i didn't see it uh then and i want to say I, I maybe was like in seventh or eighth grade when i saw it for the first time i can't remember exactly but i know i was it, i wasn't in grade school and uh i i thought it was awesome like the first one, I'm just like, whoa, this movie is awesome. I knew being a wrestling fan, growing up a wrestling fan, I knew that Roddy Piper, when he retired at WrestleMania three, that that was why he retired was because he was going to do this movie. So um, it was cool to finally just see the movie, you know, that movie. And of course, by the time I'd seen the movie, he'd been back and everything. So whatever. But yeah, my, my first thoughts were it was just it was awesome. Like I, I didn't realize how, obviously being a, a young teenager, I didn't realize the significance of it, really. Uh, that kind of dawned on me a little bit more as I you know, got older and started to realize things and see things 
and see how the world really is and how the world really works. But uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely didn't realize the social significance of it mm-hmm. and the impact that it, it it would end up having overall, you know. But yeah, awesome movie. What about you? What were your first memories of it? I was in grade school when I watched it. Holy cow. So, wow. Yeah. Um, so my parents own the video store and I loved Roddy Piper. I mean, I still do. He, but just as a kid, he was one of my favorites. I always I would watch him wrestle. And he was one of those guys who he was entertaining and he was funny and he was clever and he was really badass. But like if you looked at him, he didn't seem like a lot of the other wrestlers, big and strong and super muscular. Um, he seemed kind of like a normal average guy. And, but there was like this craziness about him. And I just, I love that. And it just, it was something like, I, I just enjoyed watching him. It just, his work really resonated with me. So when I was a kid and my mom and dad had the video store, I wanted to see anything that had Roddy Piper in it. So we'd get the um, WrestleManias, we'd get like different wrestling matches on videotape. And then anytime a movie of his came out, I wanted to watch it. So they live came out and this was a movie my brother and I would quote as kids. (laughs) And you talked about like the significance of it. And I just remember as a kid, I'm enjoying it because it's Roddy Piper and he's really funny and he's badass and he's tough. And he's like, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to, you know, fight till the end. And then you get older and you start like, think like just throughout my life, things pop up where I'm like, oh, it's they live. Oh, they live like you find yourself in those moments so many times. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And then you come to where we are today in 2021 and you're like, holy shit. It's like the movie was telling us it was trying to like warn us. Yeah, well, I I, I mentioned it uh, to you earlier mm-hmm. uh, in an interview that I heard with Roddy Piper. He said that this movie was a documentary. Yeah, <laughs> I think it, I think he may have actually wasn't it. It was uh, his when he did his podcast. He had a podcast for a while, and when he did his podcast, he talked about the movie they live. He, he may have had John Carpenter on. I can't remember if it was John Carpenter or Keith David, and uh, I, I think it was John Carpenter. And they talked about how, and Piper said basically, "Yeah, your movie ended up being a documentary." <laughs> so yeah pretty and that was back in like 2014 i believe okay but still i mean there were points throughout life where you're like oh they live and i i feel like this movie is extremely popular and it's weird because it feels mainstream without being mainstream if that makes any sense i think most people if you know like if you say oh yeah they live they they have an idea they might not have necessarily uh, watched it, but I feel like many uh, people maybe, know. Maybe, I don't maybe know. just I mean, in my circle. It's been around. Yeah, it's probably just you're in your circles in your mm-hmm. bubble. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I guess in my bubble too. I don't know how it is as far as mainstream goes, but I mean, obviously, my circle of friends was a lot of <laughs> a lot of people from wrestling, so they knew they live because of Roddy Piper. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, yeah. As far as outside of wrestling, I, my my friends network, I, I don't really think that. I mean, I'm sure they've seen they live, but I don't think that they kind of that they get it so much. Uh, it, it makes me wonder for for the people who watch they live and love this movie. I'm so curious: are those the people who are like, "Fuck, it's real," or are there people who are just like, "No, it's just a good movie. That's all it is." Probably, probably some of both I'm yeah sure. maybe i'm sure so yeah very uh yeah i, I don't know I, I don't know how mainstream it i i don't know well, you know what i've got the imdb pulled up here so why don't i check and see why don't you what, what the, how it did at the box office if it was a success or not the budget was four million dollars and it made more than that on its opening weekend so i guess you'd call it a success it grossed only thirteen million dollars. So, yeah, and, and it looks like it was just a uh, release in the U.S. because it says the worldwide gross was also thirteen million dollars. Hmm. So, yeah, very interesting. So, I, I don't. I mean, I guess it it doubled 
the budget. So I, I guess you consider that a, a success. And again, for coming out in 1988. Well, then is it maybe more of a cult classic? I would definitely call it a cult classic for sure. But absolutely a cult classic. I feel like it's somewhere in the middle. It could very well be. I mean, I don't know if it's if it gets a lot of airplay on cable TV or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know if it's hit that kind of a if it's hit the rotation, you know, on 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 like TNT and USA and those. The type TVs of don't want to air it. No. Kinda, they want us to kinda, obey. Kinda, they kinda want us to stay to, asleep. Kind of hits kind of close to home, don't you mm-hmm. think? Especially for yeah, with everything now, it's crazy. So yeah. Um, I, yeah, I would say cult classic for sure. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, this was definitely a movie that my brother and I, we would quote all the time. We we just have fun. It's like, you're okay. You're fucking ugly. <laughs> Formaldehyde face. It's yeah. so good. I yes. mean, there were so many great lines. Um, Chew bubble gum and kick ass, I think, is the most popular line from yeah. this movie. I yeah. quote it all the time and reference it all the time. <laughs> it's fantastic. So good. So good. Yeah. Just uh, a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Uh, A lot of memorable lines, a Mm -hmm. lot of, a lot of uh, it's, uh, I haven't, I haven't seen it till tonight. I hadn't seen it again. Uh, I think we watched it maybe two or three years ago. The last time we watched it. Yeah. It's been some years. And so, yeah, watching it again tonight, I was trying to pay attention while doing a watch along and and talking, but I was trying to pay attention to the, the uh, what I called the spokesperson. Yes. Uh, a lot just try to hear the stuff they were saying and then you know try to pick up on some of those things and try to listen to was it Gilbert was that his name Gilbert yeah Gilbert try to listen to him as he's directing and talking to the, the people preacher. in the background while Roddy's having a discussion with yeah with the Meg Foster character I'm trying to hear what he's saying as he's as he's talking because he's talking the, about numbers he's yeah and he's talking about what to do and how to infiltrate the 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 aliens and all that stuff and I'm trying to listen to it so, yeah, it was just pretty, it was just kind of cool, like trying to pick up on some of the background stuff that was going on and just the attention to detail that John Carpenter, that the writers, uh, I think he wrote, did he write the movie? Well, it's based off of a short it's story, based off of, yeah, 8 okay. o'clock he did in the, the morning. Yeah, so he did the screenplay. So, yeah, I mean, just, just yeah. everybody involved with the movie and, and mm-hmm. production and all that stuff. It, there was a, a lot of good attention to detail. I f- Like for me, though, every time I watch it, it's one of those movies I just get sucked in and I'm paying attention to it. And I want to see like, what did I miss? Is there something I missed? Cause I feel like every time I watch it, there might be something that I didn't notice before. Yeah. I mean, you were picking up on, you picked up on some stuff like just random graffiti that was in certain shots and in certain scenes, like the, what was it? 93 C in a a upside down triangle, which, which is 33 comes up to 33 because you get the nine and the three. So nine plus three is 12. Mm-hmm. One plus two is three. And the C is the third letter in the alphabet. So you have your 33 in the triangles. Yeah. I think that's a Masonic reference, I believe. I think, is that a Freemason re- reference? I'm not sure. No, but, but, sure. but you, but it's the 33 inside of a triangle, that's the thing. I'm which is to look for like symbolism three. and so, like the graffiti yeah. or anything. And I'm like, well, some of the stuff, I think they're just getting shots like, Oh, a train's going by. Let's get it. But it's like you never know, like, or what if it was a train going by, but what if there's something there of significance that wasn't meant to be there? I, you just never know. So I like to yeah. keep an eye out for those things. Yeah, it's it's cool just trying to pick out some of the stuff, mm-hmm. especially, you know, after you've seen the movie so many times now, you can kind of try to focus on other things that are going on instead of what, you know, the main character is yeah. doing or, or whatever. So, but it's still yeah. such a good movie that watching it, you yeah. still those the story is so good that you still get sucked into what's going on. It's it, I guess like like and I'm not trying to be argumentative or anything. I don't know if the story's that. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know, I guess it's it's like, not dialogue heavy. No, not at all. So it's kind of one of those like. They, they, you, you figure out what's going on pretty quick. Yeah. It's not, it's not too convoluted. It's not too complicated. So it's very basic, I guess. So it's not one of those where you have a lot of twists and turns and that kind of thing. It's, it is a very basic storyline. It's basically us against them. Like he figures out real quick, we're being controlled by aliens yeah. and he's, 
got to figure out a way to fight back. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's it. Like, that's that's the story. So it's not like this awesome, great, greatest story ever. I'm not saying that. It's just for me watching it, I always get sucked in because I enjoy it so much. I have fun with it. It's funny. It's intriguing. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. about I don't know about funny. He's he says some funny lines, but it's not like meant for comedy. I don't I'm not saying it's meant for comedy. I just find it funny, but I also have a warped sense of humor. So when he's shooting the aliens, I'm like, you know, like just. (laughs) Yes, I find the humor. All right. So, yeah, anyway, it's good. It's very good. Very enjoyable. Very enjoyable film. So So, do you want to get into like the the, I mean, we kind of just said the plot. There's really not. I don't really want to go through the whole movie scene by scene. No, no, no. But it stars Roddy Piper. So Roddy's character doesn't even have a name in the movie, like during the movie. Well, it's never meant. It's never it's said never mentioned. mentioned. Yeah. In like he's credited as John Nada. No, he's credited as Nada. Or Nada. But then in other things that come up, they call him John Nada. What other things that come up? He's never um, mentioned. He's never referenced mentioned in, in like in other things as John. In the movie? No, in like publication, like in people writing oh, about it, well, that, talking about well, it. Well, when you say other things, what does that mean? You, like, like things outside of the movie. He's mentioned in other things. Well, what are you talking about? So in the movie, he's never mentioned. His name, name. is never mentioned. You do not know what his name is. It appears in the credits as nada, Mm -hmm. which means nothing in interviews that Piper has done and that John Carpenter has done. And actually in a special feature that we watched that's on the Blu-ray because we watched the Blu-ray. We didn't watch it on streaming or anything. He they call him John Nada. So they tell you that his name is John Nada. But if you didn't watch any of these special features or hear any of these interviews or read any of these interviews, you wouldn't know that. You'd have no idea what his name was. If you let's say you checked out, if you watch this in the theater and you checked out as soon as the closing music hits, and you just got up and didn't even wait for the cast and the first line to come up. You wouldn't even know what his name was. Yeah, because it's never mentioned in the movie at all. Mm-mm. And then there is Keith David as Frank. Yes. So I was telling Alex, anytime somebody has like two first names as like first and last name, I always get them confused. I always like want to flip them. Like Wallace Sean, I always want to call him Sean Wallace. Like, I, oh, I don't know why my mind does that, but it's like Keith David, I want to call him David Keith. I don't know why. It's just my brain. Um, there's also Meg Foster as Holly Thompson. Yeah. Yep. And then also Gilbert. Gilbert is awesome in this movie. And that is um, Peter Peter Jason, Jason. another guy with two first names. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I was going to say that's kind of it in terms of like who more of like known actors. Yeah, they're they're kind of like the main main characters. Mm -hmm. And then you had George Flower, uh, Buck Flower, who was the drifter, the drifter being he was the guy who he's in the homeless camp and then he ends up being recruited and he's in the, in the, the, the closing scenes, just uh, giving the guys a tour around mm-hmm. the alien base and stuff. So he, he's another, uh, he wasn't a big actor, but you would like recognize him. He was back to the future. He was red, the drunk guy. Yeah. He's usually bench. like a drunk or drunk or homeless guy. In movies. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, he, he was in a lot of eighties movies, mm-hmm. I think, but yeah, most people probably recognize him from back to the future if yeah. you've seen back to the future a million times like i have he's red he's the homeless guy on the uh on the bench sleeping on yeah. the bench so. um yeah so i feel like if the movie is well casted and yeah yeah it's definitely well everyone cast. yeah everyone did a really good job i'm so happy though roddy piper because when you hear stories about like other people possibly in this movie i don't know who else was considered for let it? me look at the trivia because i because i i i thought that I didn't know that there were other people considered. For I the thought role. other people. Um, I, I'm not doubting it. it. I'm, I'm not doubting that. But I thought that I, I didn't realize Carpenter had anybody else in mind. I thought he wanted. I Piper know he wanted Piper, but I thought I had read somewhere that there were other people 
interesting. I could not picture anybody else in that role, especially think about at the time who were people that were doing 80s movies, like 80s action movies. Yeah. Who else could it have been? I mean, maybe because he's supposed to be kind of like an everyman, maybe like a Bruce Willis because he had done Die Hard. But still, I don't know. And he was more like not like a, a jacked Arnold Schwarzenegger Stallone type. So Alec Baldwin. Yeah, no. Couldn't I'm have. trying to think of people names I know. Michael uh, Bean. Yeah, Michael Bean. Michael okay, Bean. he he played Reese in the Terminator movie. Ryan Bosworth, Jeff Bridges, Bruce Campbell, Tom Cruise, Harrison Ford, Mel Gibson, Tommy Lee Jones, Michael Keaton, Christopher Lambert, Stephen Lang, Dolph Lundgren, Michael Madsen, uh, Mad Madsen. Uh, Bill Paxton, Ron Perlman, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Patrick Swayze, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and Bruce Willis were all considered. Okay. But by who, though? See, I hate those trivia. Yeah, by who? Because, like, anybody can add but to those. If, anybody if can they have a create role, an IMDb account. Because Piper, at the time, he ended up quitting WWE to do this movie. So right. it's one of those things that if they weren't sure if he was going to do it, you have to prepare for somebody else. So it's possible that if Piper right. wasn't yeah. going to do it, those are the backup people. I, I guess mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a lot of backups. Jeez. Well, they do casting. The, the only one that I could see, the, seriously, the only one I could see out of that that list you read is uh, Bruce Willis. I would say maybe Bruce Campbell or Michael Bean, actually. Michael Bean might have been good, too, because. Yeah, I could see Michael Bean doing it. Because he he had, you know, like I said, he did the Terminator. He was in Aliens. I could see him because he's not too big, not too mm -hmm. jacked. Seems he could, like he could be kind of an everyman, you know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, Piper just. Yeah, Piper. I mean, it's. it's so good. He, yeah. It is like no, facial nobody would have been expressions. As good as no, he, he did a great job. Um, but yeah, like with this movie, it just. I'm trying to think like with casting, like um, Meg Foster. Eh, yeah, I could see somebody else playing her. Yeah, I guess. I mean, Frank, I, I really like Keith David as Frank. I th yeah, Keith David was awesome as Frank. I kind of wouldn't yeah. want like. Like to think of who else it could be. I just feel like he did a really good job too, though. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I thought the the whole movie was very well cast. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I can't really, I mean, yeah, you have interchangeable characters, I guess, that you could say, oh, this guy could have been, or this girl could have played, but nah. but the way all the parts came together, it all, just yeah, it all just so good. Yeah, everything I think worked out for the best. So when you first watched this movie, yeah, when you saw the aliens. What did you think? Uh, they're aliens. I don't know. I didn't really think anything. Oh, I th I, I kind of thought that they looked cheap. Uh, that's that was my first thought. Was that looks so fake and phony and like cheap? But that that was it. Oh, I thought they looked awesome. All right, cool. I mean, it doesn't look like, like your typical gray alien. You know, like like yeah most movies so yeah I, th I thought that was it was different. I, I liked that it was different but it was I weird it was it almost like really fake. human almost like a weird bug-eyed zombie like human yeah yeah but it was different and i thought that was really cool because again aliens you get like et or like these gray things right. Right. and they all look the same and these kind of look like people like gross nasty people with big bug eyes and it was just different and neat and I don't know. I just I thought they were really cool. And then like the way the story is, it's just like, yeah, you end up like kind of hating them. Like I uh, you get what you deserve. Yeah. Well, I mean, once you once you know you they're see the bad guys. That that they are basically that your life is a lie and they're controlling everything and, yeah. and everything that you've ever known is completely made up like you're you're essentially you're in the matrix and there's nothing you can created. do about it uh yeah you 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 right away empathize and and get on the side of of nada mm -hmm. because yeah you well I, and you'd I, want to kick some ass too if you find out i feel like it, you it, this movie almost breaks people up into two camps into the like yeah just go along with it 
make money, work, you know, Stay obey, asleep, just, just, yeah, li- just go live through the life. American dream, yep. you know, that whole deal. Sure. Or like wake up to it and then realize that there's something wrong. Fight back. Do something about Resist. it. Resist. Yes. Yeah. Don't just go back to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Just- uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been. I, I got nothing else. Yeah. That's... Yeah. No, it just, I feel like it kind of divides in, into, and that's why I said before, like, if you watch, if you love this movie, I would think you're on camp awake. Camp awake. Camp awake <laughs> compared to camp sleep. But I don't know. I'm curious. Do you love this movie and you don't give a shit about any of that and don't care about the truth? Let me know. <laughs> I'm not wrapping up the show just yet. I uh, just want to know. I'm pondering. Okay. I'm like, are we done? <laughs> no. I keep wrapping it up. No, I okay. just, I wanted to throw it out there because I'm All truly right. curious. Okay. Um, yeah. So when I watched this movie, I thought the aliens were really cool. I thought like um, Roddy Piper's a badass. And then like, again, quoting everything. It was just a really fun movie, but like we had mentioned before, and I'm thinking about it more and more, just the significance and how much it like, whoa, plays into (laughs) today's like life, but even building up and like these little like glimmers of hints you get throughout life. And I was thinking about like Vince McMahon and what did Vince McMahon want to do with Roddy Piper? He didn't want him to do this movie. He didn't want Roddy Piper to quit. He wanted him to obey, you know, do what you're supposed to do. And Roddy Piper quit WWE, took a chance to go make this movie. And it's just like these little things that kind of get you thinking these little steps, these chances that people take to break away from the norm, the safe thing. Are you trying to say that Vince McMahon is an alien? Yes. Okay. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And with that. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, he would totally be like one of those alien dudes. If uh, or the humans working with them. Sure. Could very well be. That's my opinion. <laughs> so you think that there's really aliens running Running, no, that I'm just saying if the mixed movie in were real, with, mixed in with uh, with if people. the movie were real, but I don't know. Like sometimes I start to wonder, like anything's possible. You never know. I'm not saying that that is all real. I'm just saying those mentality type people who want to control everything and take over. Well, yeah, not I mean, necessarily. That's, that's pretty apparent. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's out in the open now, everybody. It's not. Uh, it's not under under uh, guys. But people don't anymore. see it though. No. no and we, and we have don't. people now who are just follow the rules and do this, even if you don't want to do it. Obey. Mm-hmm. Consume. Obey. Do not question authority. What were some of the other things that that he saw everywhere? Sleep eight watch hours. TV, watch TV. Sleep eight hours. Uh-huh. Work eight hours. What was the other eight hours? Marry and reproduce. Marry and reproduce um, was the other one. Yeah, there was a bunch. Yeah, but but it was mostly just oh oh on the money. This is your god. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Pretty pretty interesting stuff. Pretty profound. Yeah, I gotta say, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very very interesting. Does it mean anything? Maybe not. Maybe not. Well, I think it, it means it, something to those, like, if you allow it to mean something to you. It definitely, if you, uh, yeah, I mean, you could, you could definitely say, you could see how somebody like a Roddy Piper would say, it's like a documentary. Mm-hmm. Definitely could see that. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. So what, what, um, so you saw this when you were in grade school. Yes. And were you a, since you watched it then, did you then become a regular viewer of the movie did you watch it often uh yeah okay so were you like popping in the videotape in like every every day every no, week no. how often would you watch the movie i don't know i don't remember how often well, I, but i mean often but it was enough, on, like, was it on your regular rotation so I the guess, way it worked is if so at the video store we only have so many copies I, I don't know if we only had one or two copies of that movie okay so if it's rented if a movie was rented out we couldn't take it home so obviously yeah. we would take it like 
we'd want to watch different movies, but then if we wanted to watch it, if it was available, we'd take it. So it kind of all depended on when it was available. I see. Yeah. Okay. Going back like 30 years. So I don't remember how I just often, didn't know but... if it, how often you would watch like and I'm not saying like an exact thing, but if you said, Oh, I watched it like two, three times a month. Oh, okay. That's pretty regular. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Like my brother and I, for the longest time growing up, we would go to uh, the video store that we went to was called Video Movie Land. This is before there was a blockbuster in our town. And we would always rent, we'd rent either uh, Gremlins, The Never Ending Story, Back to the Future, and uh, or Teen Wolf. It was always those four movies. That was it. We didn't really rent anything else. So that's why I was saying, like, did you have like a regular well, rotation of movies? And I had movies or... that like I would watch at the video store. I'd watch Clue, but I couldn't watch that movie at the video store because they're swearing. Uh, okay. So that also played a part. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, it wasn't considered family friendly. So you weren't allowed to play movies in the video store that were not family friendly? No, not while it was open. Wow. Your, your folks ran a tight ship. Huh? <laughs> yeah, they, I was like seven. Wow. Working there it was great. Tremendous. Yeah. Cool. So uh, what else can you tell us about They Live? Any other cool trivia that you looked up? I, I Let me see. I'm trying well, to I think. just I didn't know. I don't know off the top else. of my head. I know the fight scene. We like we talk about it in the watch along. We talk about the oh, fight scene. Yeah. The fight scene was awesome. That was only supposed to be like, I think a minute long. Yeah, they just kept adding to it. Yeah. Yeah. They just kept adding to it. But it works. Yeah. It was it was great. It was fine. It, like we we were saying uh on the uh watch along. Well they can listen to yeah, that. Let's still but, watch along to hear our thoughts on it. Yeah, but also with that fight scene too, it is kind of like a pro wrestling match when it's like, okay, who's gonna win this? And I, I guess kind of well because like you think it's okay it's done oh nope he's getting up they're still going okay now it's done nope okay he's up there there they go again i i, I think it was a yeah piper we watched this the the uh, uh what do you call him geez i'm having a, a brain freeze special features mm -hmm. we watched the making of it and piper's talking about the fight scene saying oh, it's the closest to a a real life fight scene you're probably going to see in a movie uh, I don't know. I think it depends on what you're fighting about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how many real fights would, <laughs> would look like that, but um, it was, it was, I guess, relatively realistic because it wasn't like one of those, it was, it was a kind of like a fair, even 50, 50 kind of fight. Yeah. It was pretty know? dirty too. Was yeah. It? Oh yeah. They, and they get exactly, they, pro they got progressively dirtier mm -hmm. as they got more pissed at each other. Yeah. So in tired. that, in that, yeah. So in that way, it was, I guess, r relatively realistic. Uh, yeah, but I mean, when you have, I mean, you, you saw the guy that was doing the the fight coordinating, Ken Amadi, I believe, was his name. I don't know. Ken, uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but uh, and he's a guy who just a Hollywood fight, you know, choreographer, and and him and Piper came up with a lot of the fight. Uh, they they choreographed it together, but then Keith David added his, so it ended up being like a collaboration between all three, and you got what you got finally on film, which is like the super long fight. So yeah, yeah. it was it was great. It's like never ending. <laughs> it just no, it keeps just keeps going, going, and going. And like yeah, the Energizer awesome. Bunny going and going and going. Good stuff. Yeah. Were there any other scenes that you really loved in this movie? I, I like when he goes into the grocery store after he first finds the glasses and he's walking around kind of seeing everything and noticing everything. And he just starts, he starts in on this when he first starts, you know, kind of verbalizing what he's seeing, mm -hmm. you know, you're seeing it as the viewer, but you're not, you don't really, and you can see the look on his face. He does a great job conveying his emotion and, and his amazement and disbelief all at the same time, you know, kind of all, he he wears the you know he he really portrays it well you can mm -hmm. tell what he's thinking but then he verbalizes it and he starts coming out with it in the in the grocery store and it's it's pretty it's it's witty it's clever it's it's funny you could say uh and, and it's prob probably something a, a normal person would say you know if they were if they were 
coming coming up on on this type of scenario, you're you're noticing that half the people in here are, are people. The other half are these weird zombie alien looking things. Like what the what the <laughs> fuck is going on? You know, so he yeah, I, I just that that was like probably one of my favorite scenes. Mm-hmm. That and when he goes in the bank. Oh yeah. And he drops the the, the bubblegum line. That's a just it's a classic. Oh, like, it caught me. Like as a kid, a that classic. caught me huge. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a classic. So for me, it was like from the moment he like puts those glasses on until the end. That was your favorite scene. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the whole last half of the movie. The whole last half. He puts the glasses on. Yes. That's my favorite scene until right. the end. Um, actually, one of the things I did see that I read was um. I don't think it was on the thing. I think I read it that at the very end of the movie where he flips off the police at the end yeah, and he's wishing that his middle finger was like stronger and straighter. And all that went in my mind is that's what she said <laughs> after reading that. But I looked at it like, okay, you just got shot. Like you're fighting the good fight. Like you're doing what you can. He's, so. Yeah. He's defiant to the end. Yeah. Like, fuck you. You're not taking me. motherfuckers. Yep. Yeah. It's so good. I think I, I was like, I, I didn't think it was a big deal. I was, I got to say that, that when I first watched the movie, that swerve at the end with, with uh, Meg, uh, Meg Foster's character, when she, when she offs Keith David, I'm like, what? I didn't, I didn't see that coming. Uh, I obviously it, watching it, you know, every subsequent viewing after that, you, you can see the little seeds getting dropped. Mm-hmm you know, the little hints and the clues getting yeah. dropped that she's going to do that. But, you know, well, when, she did throw him out a window. Y- yes, but but it was it, that's, again, the cleverness of the of the writing of the movie, the screenplay and everything, because you could say, well, he did kidnap her and yeah, she thinks he's but, fucking crazy. But it's weird because like she just shows up and she's like looking at him like they're in love or something. And she's like, yeah, that, I, that was I a little weird. Killed you. And it's like. Okay, where's this coming from? Because you threw him out a window. Even well, if he was right, even if she put the glasses on. That's that's why. And he was right. It's just still a weird kind of reaction about it. Like you'd be like, yeah, I'm kind of an asshole. I'm sorry. But well, to- she didn't get a chance to say sorry because I get that. But what I'm saying is when she saw him and she's like, I thought I killed you, the way she's looking at him, like she's ready to cry. I just kind of felt like it was too much. It was a little over the top. Okay. And then the fact that she worked at the news station. Yeah, that was kind of a red flag right there, right off the bat. Like, okay, well, she's the whole time probably in on it. It's like, what is it? Channel uh, cable 54. Cable 54 yeah. So that obviously that's going to be the cable channel that <laughs> there's something to do with that. Like it hints throughout the movie. But yeah, I, I thought like, I don't know. I never trust her. Even as a kid, I didn't like her. <laughs> Maybe because I love Roddy Piper and I was like, you threw him out a window, you dirty whore. But I didn't like oh. her, didn't trust her. And then as a kid, when I watched the end, I was pissed. Yeah. Well, you never you I, I like the way that they actually shoot the whole ending because you don't actually see her shooting keith david you, mm-hmm. i mean you you see her put the gun to his head and you you hear the gunshot but you don't they cut away you don't actually see that which i thought was cool because that's one of those where you don't need the gratuitous no. shot you can you can you get you, a, get, you, get, a, you get the point yeah. across just fine and and i i would say even better without showing it and then you know you know she's gonna be coming up on piper and uh yeah just that whole thing was like what the and even what like a, at the end swerve. when she's like, just come inside with me. Could, you can't trust her. She just killed your friend. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like, how can you trust her? Yeah. Even if you wanted to, even if you decided to like turn back and forget everything, you can't trust her. Exactly. So, yeah. He made the right call. He did. He shot her. Yes, he Bang. did. Was she the only human? that he shot because he was letting yeah yeah, because he He, was letting humans go he was gonna get the the uh the drifter guy yeah the sellout uh uh, turncoat whatever Mm -hmm. you want to call him they were gonna get him but he he teleported out of there using the little turn 
gimmick on the watch. Yep. The so teleporter. He teleported out of there. Mm-hmm. But he was going to get him. But but he was, I think, justified because these people, are, they're, they're not on your side. They're traitors to, to yeah. humanity. Oh, that was one of the other things. Um, doubt humanity was one of the other things yes. that on, on the uh, when you when he first puts the glasses on and he's looking at the magazines and yes, the billboards the magazines, and everything. Yeah. And he's seeing obey, consume, marry and reproduce, watch TV, all that stuff. The other one, the one that really stuck out to me was was the humanity, the uh the doubt humanity. Like wow, that's just crazy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and that man, talk talk about being a uh, prescient movie with that with that quote but yeah anyway sorry that that popped in my head so yeah um trying to read all the magazines trying to read everything it was hard yeah i mean there's there's a lot going on and then in the banquet scene too when we talked about like with the people as humans and these aliens at the the end of the movie talking about yeah Yeah. at the very Mm -hmm. end and you know like you watch that and you like think okay are they gonna just kill them all because yeah. at that point they're all yeah. working together they're all they're all in it for all, all the humans that are there in it for the money yeah. you're the guy because you can't saying, win anyway yeah you can't win anyway so and they're all over just, the world it's, it's it's there are no countries yeah there's no countries they're all over the world it's a one they they run they rule and run everything we're just cattle to them mm-hmm. we're just we're just slaves they want us marrying and reproducing so which, they have more slaves. Which, what does that say, too? So for the humans that they let in and work with, if they're all just cattle, like, what does that say? Like, to, to be one of those people in, it's like, yeah, I'm rich. I'm just rich cattle. I'm like a pet. But they're, uh, they're allowed to enjoy and have a good life. Like a pet. That's but they but they're allowed. So instead to of out on the farm working and have a you good get to life. be a pet like you're a house cat. How are they or a being dog? A pet? They're they all they do is they they earn more money so they go and do more shit. They're just but they're under they their don't, control. But they don't do anything that they want to do. They're yeah exactly they're under their control. But they're they have they give them money. They get they let them do what they want to do. They let them be rich. They yeah. let them have you know, planes and they let them do whatever, you know, whatever they want. Live the good life. Live the good life. Taken care of. You're, you're taken care of. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. So just, what I'm just saying don't is if, rock the boat. If people are cattle and sheep, then yes. these people working with them, and if they're like farm animals, yeah, working animals, then that's what I'm saying. The people who are working with them, who have the money, who get what they want are like the pets, the well-treated pets of these aliens. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Because I was just trying to, in my mind, like, okay, well, if if we're all cattle, like, if that's how you think of humans, then how can you really enjoy their company unless it's something like a pet? Look at, I mean, yeah, but, but think about it. It's it's so true because look at how society, look at how we're all conditioned to act. When we are, when you go to an amusement park, you're corralled around. You mm-hmm. have to line up in a little corral. You go to a, the grocery store. You line up. Everything is lined. Now they put fucking arrows on the goddamn floor telling you which way to go and where to walk and where you're allowed to walk, where you're not allowed to walk. What do you, what do you of course, we're like cattle. We're like sheep. Yeah. And the, That's the absolutely. The one in me is like, fuck that. I'm going to do the opposite. That's, but that's, yeah, that's. That's how we are viewed. Speaking of like amusement parks, I had a thought in my head the other day, and this is off topic, but I was thinking about like rides, like roller coasters. Okay. And many people enjoy roller coasters, but there's that fear and they like that, that thrill of fear because of something that could happen. And it made me wonder, like if no accidents ever happened on amusement rides, like the, the kind of scary dangerous type ones would there be that fear and then it makes me wonder like are sometimes things manufactured to instill that fear in people to give to get them to have that reaction it was just like a random thought like they do it on purpose so it keeps that healthy dose of fear and kind of like anything when you think that uh, amusement park rides are 
manufactured to keep you afraid? No, to keep that like that little bit of fear that, you know, oh, could something happen? It's scary. Why is it scary? Because well, something think, bad could happen I don't while think, you're on it. I don't think that that's, I, I don't think that's, I, I think if anything, maybe some of the stories or urban legends that we hear about maybe things happening from rides are invented and concocted to instill that fear mm -hmm. to add to the experience for some people. But I that, think yeah, that's because I think a lot of those stories that you hear about oh the time the pirate ship went all the way and did a three like a 720 and kept going around and around and people fell out like those kind of stories. I think that's it. That's so that when you go on the pirate ship next time, you're like, oh, is this going to be the time that but it yeah, goes like all the way that, around? Like roller coasters, like yeah. things that happen. And obviously, sometimes things happen because people are idiots um, or, or people don't know how to put stuff together. Like we have like the carnivals and stuff. Or there you go are to. legitimate accidents. Yeah, and there's, and there's they, accidents. Sure. But it just makes me wonder the, the things that are manufactured, being it just false stories or things done on purpose to, to keep people just afraid enough you can still go enjoy it but you have a little bit of fear i don't know that's just a thought that i had and i guess it kind of plays in with this movie too because it's like you know being lied to to keep you in control behaving the way they want you to behave well i mean we've talked about this a million times on this show we've mentioned it so many times you're conditioned to think and act a certain way from the time you're born. Mm -hmm. You just are. That's it. Yeah. Oh, especially, absolutely. especially anybody born in the last 50 years, you've, you've been conditioned by television and movies. Oh, you've yeah. been programmed. Your, your parents were programmed. That's that's just that's reality. And it's trying to break that programming. It's, but I think exactly. just questioning everything, whether it's true or not, just putting that question out there and wondering about it is a good way to start to break that programming and like what is real and what's done on purpose. Once you start to once you realize in my in, for me, in my view, in my opinion, in in my reality, what I've come to realize is that it's not just what is the truth or what is fake i should say it's what's real that's that's the question you got to ask yeah and that's when you start to realize not much really is and that's when it that's when it can be scary if you allow it to be you just have, I mean, for me, it's just a matter of un trying to unlearn everything mm -hmm. that you've learned your if whole you're life. You're like trying to reprogram your brain. Trying to, and, yeah. Yeah. Because everything. We, we are, they call it programming for a reason. It, it's, you can, you can reprogram your brain. You mm -hmm. can, you can do that kind of stuff. It's, yeah. it's not out of the realm of possibility. That was like one of the it's first things not, I did uh, with hypnotherapy for the first script I wrote was yeah. to work on reprogramming yeah. my mind. Yeah. I mean, because, well, that's the thing. And those are, those are things that they're not really talked about much because they don't want you to know that. Mm -mm. Nobody wants you to know that. They don't, I mean, they don't you want can to be, change for the better. Yeah, they don't want it to be common knowledge or anything. They don't want you to know that you, all you have to do is politely decline. Hint, hint. Just that's, say no. Just say no. That's for that. You can take that for what you will. Uh, they, they don't want you to know that that's really all you have to do. No, of course not but that is all you have to do yeah just, just say no and just, just say no just realize that we were taught that back in the 80s just, just say re no realize that you are in control nobody can control you people can coerce you people can try to manipulate you people will try to manipulate you but just realize that as long as you know that you are the one that's in control no one can touch you you're and good. Again, like that's true for hypnotherapy. It's so difficult to realize that and come to that realization. But it's the truth. You're you're in control of yourself. Nobody you controls can't control you. what's around you. You can control yourself. And yep. with hypnotherapy, it's like that's one thing I tell people all the time who are new to it. You're in control. There is nothing I can say. If you don't want to do something, you won't do it. Right. Because yeah. you're in control. I, I'm a guide, but it's like I can't coerce you. 
I can't talk you into it. Like, it's just either you're like, it's all on you if you want to do something or not. And it's just so true in life that you are in control and we all have choices. We might not like the choices that we have, but you have the choice and the ability to choose. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. So do so, we want to do some reviews? Yeah. Why don't we, why don't we go to IMDB and Ooh. read some of these user reviews? Let's see here. We've got, it's, I mean, the movie itself gets a 7.3 out of 10 rating, which is pretty freaking high for IMDB. That's pretty good. Now it looks like we've got, I'm going to go to the one star reviews. Okay. I, I, they just must have updated this because uh, it's, it's a little different setup now, which I kind of like. You can actually go and filter by the uh, stars. Okay, <laughs> here we go. I'm going to go with uh, Jeff Haas, February 14th, 2000. He gave it a one-star review, and he titled his review, Somehow It's a Cult Classic. Oh. All right, let's hear what this gentleman has to say. I finally got around to renting this on DVD after hearing so much about it from sources that I considered reliable. Normally, I'm a fan of John Carpenter, but this movie is really weak, slow, long, dull, with really stupid characters. Carpenter seems to know he's only got enough story to fill a half hour Twilight Zone episode, so he stretches every single scene to the maximum. He can't show a guy walking up to a building then cut to him inside. No. He has to slowly pan with him as he walks down the sidewalk and up to the door. Then we cut inside and watch as he walks through the door and looks around slowly. I guess if I saw this when I was 14, it would have been fun. Good thing DVDs have fast forward buttons. That way I got to the predictable ending much sooner. If I had to guess this person right. was born after like, like, in, like the year 2000 or later. This person wrote this review February 14th, 2000. Oh, I said that already. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear 2000. Yes. My mistake. Yes. I'm like, no, you can't be a child of the 80s. Well, let's see. He didn't like it, so that's OK. I mean, like the, the stuff he's saying about uh, the movie, the way it was shot, and everything, what he's talking about. OK, I guess I could see that. But at the same time, though, what for the story it made sense the way it was shot the way it was done because the character is trying to figure out what's going on he's trying to grasp everything he's trying to he's trying to sneak into a place he's trying to be quiet and he's got to walk he's trying to comprehend what's going on yeah he's trying he's kind of investigating he's trying not to be noticed so i I can see yeah all right He, he has a gripe that's fine it is what it is no not everybody's gonna like the movie I actually like reading the one star reviews for movies I like because I want to see how do you how do you not like this? I like to hear these opposing views. And then there's me telling them why they're wrong. <laughs> of course. All right. So dead on arrival. Another one star review here by Moon Spinner 55. This was left on January 15th, 2006. Rock bottom science fiction thriller from director John Carpenter, who also adapted the screenplay from Ray Nelson's short story under a pseudonym. Concerns aliens disguised as humans taking over a large city. Thank goodness for the thoughtful drifter who ambles into town and sniffs out the mystery. Real life wrestling star Rowdy Roddy Piper actually does the outlandish material a favor by playing it so low key. But Carpenter never did show a talent for handling actors and everyone in this cast comes off looking bad. C players, Meg Foster, Keith David, George Buckflower and Jason Robards. The third are strictly on their own stuck with a script, which is a grab bag of sci-fi cliches. No stars from one, two, three, four. So, okay. So out of four stars, this guy gives it no stars. I get it. I like how people make their own rating system on IMDb cool. reviews. It's pretty cool. Got to say. <laughs> it's it's so, how many out of 10? No, uh, I, I'm going to make my own. W- would you like a more recent yes. one star rated? Okay. Here's a here's one from Animal Nut 67691 from September 17th, 2019. Another one star. Stupid, even when I watched it as a teenager. I came across this movie in my search for horror flicks to add to my want to watch list. I honestly couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the high the rating 
the high the ratings for this monumentally ridiculous excuse for a horror film. It was mind boggling to say the least. I remember watching this when I was a teen. The only thing that made it bearable then was our ability to find humor in the appalling acting, cheesy one-liners, and unbelievably low-budget so-called special effects. It was stupid then and, and an utter joke now. I've never been much of a Carpenter fan, but that doesn't mean I won't give credit where credit's due. I thought the thing was a masterpiece. I agree with that. But unfortunately for John, I think they live is something he'll never live down. But I don't think it's a horror movie. And maybe that's where the confusion is. This is more of like a sci-fi action. I mean, Car- yeah, Carpenter movie. called it an action movie. Yeah. Uh, IMDb listed as an action horror sci-fi thriller. It doesn't come off so, as, I, I never considered it, considered it a horror movie. I didn't either. Uh, so I'm not really sure where horror I don't know if it's just because it's it's John Carpenter. And that's why I wonder if that's what people are expecting. It could be. It could very well be. I mean, you have actors and and directors that are associated with certain genres of films. So it could very well be. I mean, did you when when Arnold Schwarzenegger did his first comedy were people, you know, what were people expecting? I'm sure you had people that hated it because they wanted him to just go and shoot people and, you know, whatever, be the Terminator again. So I don't know. How about we jump all the way to the other end of the spectrum? Sure. And we'll do a couple more reviews here. Let's what end on get? a positive note. Yeah. With some folks that probably love the movie more than you. Actually, I don't know if that's possible, but. <laughs> Anything's right. possible. Anything is. Oh, look at this. From February 3rd, 2020, Eric Van Sagellen gave this 10 out of 10 stars. More relevant than ever. This movie resonates in 2020 as hard as it can. Watch and learn, millennials. All right. Short, sweet, to the point. Here's another one. 10 out of 10. From Bit 4 Byte, July 18th, 2020. This movie could be called The Great Awakening 101. People who are asleep have no idea how incredibly aggressive they will fight to remain ignorant of how they are unwittingly harming their own family, friends, favorite celebrities, and loved ones. This movie is not the amazing is not the amazing because hold on. I have to correct the way this is so it's not only amazing. This movie is not that amazing because typical reasons like amazing visuals, blockbuster budget, etc. Uh Okay. What makes this movie deserve 10 stars is because of its massive value in helping humanity break free from the shackles holding them back, which like an insane person, they're fighting with all their energy to remain in the fantasy world that they live in so that they do not have to face the disturbing reality of what is really going on in the world we live in. Okay. Are there any older ones? Let's see. I've got one from 2004. Anything how, how old do you want me to go? I've got another 2004, 2001, 2019, another 2020. What's the 2019? Let's see. Just look, they're everywhere. Buy, consume, and reproduce by Unique Particle. August 14th, 2019, 10 out of 10 stars. My fifth favorite movie ever and 400th review on here. I'll probably either get hate or love, but I am a conspiracy theorist and I believe everything about this masterpiece. There's so much profoundness in it and extremely important metaphors. I feel bad for anyone who doesn't believe something bizarre about Earth. Even if it's not aliens, we're definitely all being brainwashed. Also, I love everything about Roddy Piper and his expressions. So happy to own a collector's edition of They Live. Very much worth it. Quite unique and wonderful film. And let's do like a 2000, 2001. Here's one from Carl Erickson, October 17, 2001. 10 out of 10 stars, maybe the bravest film ever made. In this day and age, when yuppies rule the world, it is indeed a brave thing making a movie which depicts them as alien non-humans slaughtering mankind when not enslaving it. The truth is, of course, that the yuppies are just lackeys, which in this film only applies to the humans joining the aliens and not to the aliens themselves. Nevertheless, what a wonderful, brave film. Took a long time for Carpenter before he recovered from this one, it appears. He still isn't back amongst the moneymakers. But with this film, he has left a legacy of awe. 
mankind enslaved by market economy, brainwashed to stupidity. That's what this film is about. Oh, how I wish it was so simple as only putting on some special sunglasses as in this film and then see what everything is about. Honors for bravery and a carpenter for doing this. Tremendous. Let's do one more. Another one? All one right. more before we wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> 10 out of 10 stars from N. Kishudak, October 25th, 2020. I'm here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. Consume, marry, and reproduce. Obey. 40 years since we heard these lines and more actual than ever. You're here. All right. There you go. <sighs> there you have it. Put on the glasses, damn it. That's how I'm going to end this today. Put on the glasses. Wake up. Don't see obey. what's going on. Say no. Just say no. Don't comply. Don't consent. And just live your life and be happy and realize what is real. Sounds is reasonable. Yeah. yeah. So without any further ado, do you want to once again let everybody know what's going to be coming out here in a couple of days so that they can be on the lookout for it. Yeah. So bonus episode, there's going to be a watch along to they live. Yeah. You're just going to hear us talking, talking while we're watching the movie. Yeah. So if you have it on streaming, if it's on one of the streaming services, I'm not sure if it is on any currently right now or not. Uh, or if you own the DVD itself or the Blu-ray, we watched it on the Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Uh, Feel free to yeah, watch I don't know if us. on streaming if it gets edited or anything. So if you have it, Blu-ray, I don't awesome. think I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that I mean, it, there's nothing really. In, well, yeah, true. Nowadays, you never know, but uh, I don't think there's anything in there really that is con that contra. I mean, I guess the whole movie I is still, controversial. But, I still trust the tangible <laughs> items. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. So, anyhow, so check out check that out. Be on the lookout for that. That'll be out either yeah. uh, uh, Friday or Saturday. So check it out. Mm -hmm. But until next time, put on the glasses. And uh, yeah, I am the Golden Greek. Alex Arion joined as always. I'm a beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing trophy wife, the lovely Monique. And you've been listening to the Home Record Podcast. <laughs>